How's it going, YouTube? Crazy316. This will be my response to Antibu86 because I asked any user on YouTube to do something for me and he attempted to do just that. So let's see what exactly I asked uh, YouTube users to do first. To anybody on YouTube, please find some information that refutes the brain plasticity discovery of Gordon M. Shepard and the confirmation of this through Mark Breedlove's work showing us that sexuality has an effect on your brain in that it will change the size of the brain and the shape of the brain or in certain areas of the brain and rewire it and change the size of the of the connections okay in turn this changes hormonal levels in turn this changes your skin chemistry which in turn in turn changes your scent that's all I asked for now let's see if he actually carried out what I asked for I found Breedlove's contact information and I sent him an email with a, a link to the article and I asked him about this statement that he just made and wouldn't you know it the nice guy sent me an email back only a few hours later and here's what he wrote I'll, I'll read for you the, the whole thing dear Andy of course I stand by my statement uh, well, crazy. There, you, there you go. I mean, he does stand. He says he stands by his statement. It's right there. Maybe you're right, crazy. Uh, but he continues. But clearly, it's going beyond the data and beyond the statement to say that homosexuality is a matter of choice. So you openly admit on YouTube that you verified with Breedlove that the statement was true on brain plasticity. But wait, you added something extra in on the email to him when you sent it to him saying that I think it's a choice. Nowhere does that article, nor do I state that I that it's a choice. We say environmental factors affect it. And that's the case here. So let's continue on with the nonsense that you bring. In the meantime, there have been differences found between gay and straight rams in the POA, the part of the brain that contains INAH3 in humans of sheep. I don't know any sensible way to say that some rams chose to be gay. In the site, I'll be posting a link to the endocrine group which did the study on the ram and the sheep and, uh, and the POA sizes uh, in the brain. But to throw that off its rocker, because um, we're not sure, they're roughly in the same area as the INAH3 in humans. However, um, it may not, it may or may not be exactly uh, perfect, but William Bine reviewed um, and debunked LeVay's study in that LeVay had a ton of technical problems with his work and anybody who tried to replicate his work. So, for example, uh, his samples included 19 brains of gays who died of AIDS or homosexuals that died of AIDS, 16 brains from men whose sexual orientation or preference was unknown, um, he assumed the 16 were heterosexual, even though five had died from AIDS. Uh, more importantly, although LeVay's argued um, that a small INAH3 caused homosexuality, some of the homosexuals had an INAH3 that was larger than the average size of the INAH3 of heterosexuals, and some of the heterosexuals had an INAH3 that was smaller than those of homosexuals. So some of his homosexuals should have been heterosexuals, and vice versa. And in William Bynes' study, he noted that uh, drug abusing um, heterosexuals had a smaller INAH3 than that a, of, he, of, of homosexuals. So, what is the conclusion for Breedlove's work? So, with all the crazy studies that are out there, I decided to ask Mr. Breedlove myself a question um, in order, in hopes to getting an answer and to clarify this whole situation and that email simply stated um, if your statement is true that sexuality causes changes in the brain rather than the brain causing changes in sexuality can it be true that since animals tend to mount anything when they smell a female in heat such as dogs and cats um, is it possible that a ram can smell a female in heat mount another ram out of confusion of instinct and no access to a female and have the POA in the ram's brain change or over time change 
Uh, likewise, the same for human for a human who is practicing homosexuality and begins to get addicted to it and have the INAH3 change over time. I ask this because it seems there are those that thought they were homosexual but change out of it, and those that thought they were heterosexual and change out of it, and they stay that way, some of them. If it is such a hardwired genetic experience, why is it, which is claimed by uh, many, with without hard, hard, without hard evidence thereof, why then do we have these changes which seem to correlate to your quote? And then I said, thanks for taking the time to read this, so on and so forth. But unfortunately, Mark Breedlove was just as arrogant and as rude and as evil as can be, um, knowing that I was a Christian trying to get straight answers. So I decided to email another scientist who wishes to be, uh, be na uh, remain nameless because he was... Um, he responded hastily because he was getting ready to go on a two-week vacation. So I asked him if I could um, read his responses, but he said just leave his name out of it because they are off-the-cuff, hastily written responses. So I'm going to respect his wishes, and maybe after his vacation I'll try again, and maybe he'll allow me to um, uh, let people know who he was. But um, pretty much this is his response. He says, um, you ask good questions and the bottom line is that we don't have good answers. I doubt that sexual behavior is going to change the structure of INAH3, how, uh, structure such as INAH3. However, I have argued that perhaps the gay men in LaVey study, all of whom had AIDS, may have been more compliant with particular AIDS meds, example fluconazole, compared to uh, intravenous drug uses who users who tend to have very disorganized lives and to not comply with meds. Uh, fluconazole alters liver function in a way that decreases testosterone and increases estrogen, either of which could potentially influence INAH3 volume. In my own study, gay men had larger brains than uh, the drug-abusing straight men. Thus, the ratio of INAH3 volume to brain size was decreased in gay men. I think decreases in brain size in the drug users was due to poor nutrition and medical care prior to death. Alternatively, small brains could predispose to poor impulse control. This really does not answer your question. So here we have scientist A, and we also have uh, William Bind that both agree that they've done studies that show that drug abusing heterosexual men have smaller INAH3 than those of homosexual men. So the size of INAH3 has no linkage whatsoever as, a, as um, correlating to these studies, they have no linkage to homosexuality. There's no link that has been proven there. This is why all the way back in my first video, the LaVey study has been debunked. So not only have you not, uh, Antipo86, have you not refuted my point, but you've confirmed it by emailing Mark Breedlove and him saying he stands by his statement. So what was your point in making this video? Well, your point was to try to discredit my saying it was a choice where, however, I have not said that. We have stated time and time again that it is in environmentally influenced or socially influenced, not choice. Uh, 4G has stated this as well. Socially influenced, environmentally um, influenced. So your video is a complete fail. Pretty much what all these scientists listed in all of my past videos and in this one, they all can't agree on a cause. We do not know the cause of homosexuality. We don't know.